We're here at UNF 12 Club, UNF here in Hollywood, California. I'm here with Steve Bash, one of the founding members of UNF. How are you doing today, Steve? Tired. Tired. Yeah, we had a long show. We've been doing one, one show every month. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's, it's tough to talk to me after a show because there's a lot of stuff that comes together for the show, but I'm glad it's over. I'm glad we had another successful show, another Club UNF show. Like, how many people are doing shows in an environment like this? Uh, but I'm feeling good about it. It was a great live show. Uh, so just looking forward to the next one on October 21st. What you're doing is definitely unique. It's definitely working. I talked to a lot of people today, interviewed a lot of people, and they all had great things to say about UNF. What is your favorite part about putting all this together? What's, what's the spark that does it for you? I mean, I like the creation of it. I've been doing this for a long time. I've probably promoted you know, more than 150 shows. I've seen a lot of big shows and what they do. And so I like, you know, the fact that we just kind of put our own spin on things and kind of, you know, make it UNF style, make it up next style. Um, you know, we, we know, I know a lot about, you know, as an attorney representing fighters, how to treat fighters right, um, working for big promotion companies, you know, seeing what works, what doesn't work. So we kind of, you know, I call it a best practices thing. So, you know, we've got a great team. Everybody, you know, puts in their share from the matchmaking, to the organization, to the business affairs, to the production. So, I mean, I'm just blessed to be part of it. So I just, I like our own little spin on it. Like we're not trying to be like anybody else. We're just trying to be like us. We notice some people are copying a lot of things we do, but we take that as a compliment. Cause I think honestly, especially in Southern California, we're, you know, we're upping everybody else's game because they see what we're doing. And so they realize, okay, you know, we can't just fall back on, you know, doing things the old school way. We got to do it a different way. Otherwise, everyone's going to go by the wayside. You guys are definitely a leader in the space right now. And there's a good reason for it. You guys are really killing it. You're setting the standard. I do have a question, though. Yeah. What are the title fights tonight? The, one of the fighters pulled out 30 minutes before the fight. What do you think about that? So that's pretty crazy. I mean, I, I've been around, you know, boxing and MMA since 2005. I don't recall anything like that happen. I remember seeing a fight on TV a long time ago where some guy in boxing just looked at his opponent and said, no, nah, fuck this, I'm getting out of here, and literally walked out of the ring. But other than that, um, I've never been a part of it, and it was really tough on us because that was our co-main event, and we're live, and I get, I get something in my ear saying, that fight's not happening. And so, you know, I got to give credit to literally the ring announcer, the the play-by-play -play and the color commentators, John King, you know, Dave the Schmo, Chad Fishburne, Mark Ortega, who was show running. Like, literally everybody pivoted. You guys pivoted. We're like, we're going to do some interviews. And Steve O'Connell started doing some interviews on the side, you know, because we needed to stretch the show a little bit and then figure out what we're going to do because we were down to, like, one or two fights. Um, and then we even, you know, try, you know, try to figure out, like, it was bad for Anthony DeSimone because you, you feel crushed for the guy that trained and got ready and wasn't able to, I mean, we did a parade where he faced his opponent face to face, but he never got a chance to lay hands on him. So, I, I mean, you know, we, we improvised and we, and we, you know, adjusted as much as we could, but it was pretty surreal. And unfortunately, and I don't know, if, you know, who's listening to this, but. Um, unfortunately, on a certain level of fighters, you know, the camo fighters, there's not as much accountability. You know, there's there's no there's no you know money contract, there's no fines, there's no suspensions or anything else like that. So I have heard about, you know, in California, a lot of fighters just, you know, wake up one morning and change their mind. We had that at the weigh-in this morning. You know, I heard somebody missed the flight, but you don't know if the guy missed the flight. Maybe the guy didn't want to get on a flight. Um, and so I see that happening a little bit more at this level. Uh, so hopefully that can be fixed because there needs to be some accountability on it. Because, you know, we're going to do what we can as an organization to take care of Anthony D. Simone. He's got an open invitation to fight on any one of our cards. We're going to do everything we can to get him the most reliable opponent. Um, but it's a shame. Uh, but, you know, we got to, as, as you say, you know, we got to roll with the punches. Right. And I spoke to Anthony D. Simone. He said he's ready to defend that belt whenever, because he's a little bit disappointed, obviously, with what happened tonight. Do you have someone in mind lined up for that? I mean, when something like that happens, the first thing that goes to my mind is, like, I would do a show next week for him, if I could. Uh, he did. He called, out a, he called out a guy that built his gym mate. So what we're going to do at UNF is we will call that fighter, we will call his coach, we will do everything we can to deliver that fighter, and if the guy punks out, the guy punks out. If, if he does, then, like I said, we're going to at least find... 
you know, somebody that's coming from a reliable gym. We know the trainer. We know the fighter. And we know that this guy's not going to have, you know, cold feet two days before, two weeks before, or even two two minutes before the fight. So, um, you know, we'll do everything we can in our power to do it. Um, and a lot of times what we'll do in that situation is we'll have a backup. So we'll have a guy in that weight class and say, okay, look, if anything happens, like we got this guy as a backup uh, to bring in as well. But we'll we'll do everything we can to make it right. It's out of our control. Um, it's really a shame. Like I said, it's, it's something that at this level of the sport um, happens more often than it should. Uh, but that's why UNF's here. So we got to make it right. And uh, maybe other organizations won't. But uh, you'll be seeing Anthony DeSimone in a UNF cage real soon. That's the quality that UNF brings. Steve Bash, thank you so much for thank everything you that you do. Much. Thank yeah. you for the Old Money, New Money podcast. It was a pleasure to have you guys here. Uh, as we grow, I hope you guys grow, and uh, you know we'll do this again.